opinion on what she's seeing right after the game. Not on Monday, right after the game. Jackson, end zone, touchdown! Seth Roberts climbs the imaginary ladder. You can still feel the New England DNA in it. Jackson, end zone, touchdown! A strike! Mark Andrews! Jackson has completed his last 11 passes. Oh, that fake off the stutter step. Lamar Jackson! Jackson's still going! Oh! Remarkable! 300 total yards. Jackson, the spin and toss. Ingram makes a man miss! Diving! Touchdown! What an effort! <laughs> You know, in the NFL, winning is everything. Until you win a Super Bowl, nothing you do matters. It doesn't matter what you accomplish in the regular season, it means absolutely nothing. You don't prove yourself until you can show everybody you can win a championship. And the Ravens know that. What the Ravens are doing right now is not winning games. They are making statements. They are telling the NFL that we are here and we are contenders. We're coming. We are definitely coming. And we're itching for a Super Bowl. Man, this is great. The mentality around this team is absolutely flawed. It's just beautiful. It's a brotherhood. They play together. They have fun on the field. Everything's just clicking for them. This team is scary. This team is much scarier than I thought they would be. They're better than what any of us thought they were going to be at this point. I didn't expect this offense to play at this high of a level. I, I, I assumed that the defense would be able to play at this high of a level because the Ravens defense always turns it up in the second half. December, November and December is where the defense plays its absolute best. History has just shown that for the Ravens. But for this offense to be at this high of a level, man, this team is scary. The Ravens today just blew out the Houston Texans. It wasn't even close. The first quarter was a complete mess for both teams. But once the Ravens offense got in its groove, they just took off and they never looked back. In the first quarter, um, Lamar Jackson, him, he was off. He was off target. He was a little bit angsty. And some of the throws he was putting out there, he was missing his guys, man. A little bit overthrown, a little bit too wide. You know, he had to calm himself down. But he was a little bit off. Some miscues in the first quarter, you know. Getting those jittery vibes. He had that in the first quarter. You know, started the game one for six. But after that, he completed 13 straight passes and threw two passing touchdowns. For the game, he threw four, um, four touchdown passes. It was absolutely flawless. Man, it was 17 to 24, 224 passing yards. Four touchdowns, and they had like 86 yards rushing on the ground. He was absolutely spectacular once again. Another fourth quarter, he gets to sit back and relax. What a great performance this young man is having. You can go ahead and hate on it. You can say whatever you want. But the guy continues to play at this high of a level, and nobody expects him to be this successful this early in his career. Most of them already written him off. They looked at that playoff game last year and said he would never do anything. A lot of them had him coming into the season and getting completely exposed. And by week six, he'd probably be either benched or injured. The fact that that's not happening and he's in the MVP conversation and may actually win MVP is shocking a lot of people. And a lot of guys have retracted their statements from what they said earlier on. It's crazy what this young man's doing. It's crazy how this offense is playing. This offense, it just seems like you can't stop it. Once it gets going, it is over. It is terrifying. As a Ravens fan, I am enjoying this because we've never had an offense. This is the greatest Raven offense we've ever seen in our entire franchise history. We've never had an offense this great. Never. This offense is scary. They put up points. They score on you. They get down the field, man. They are scary. They can beat you with the ground game, and they're beating you with the pass game. It is, it is just absolutely wonderful. Um, Seth Roberts got his first touchdown as a Raven. It was absolutely spectacular. He mossed this man. Guys got great hands. I was so happy from when he got that touchdown. I was just happy. I was smiling because you know Lamar was like, I gotta get Seth this first. This team is so unselfish. 
it doesn't matter. As a receiver, obviously, you know, a lot of receivers, they look at their stats. They want to get the best stats. They want to put up the greatest performances. But everyone on the Ravens, they're so unselfish. It doesn't matter. Our receivers are blocking a lot of times. But, you know, they don't care. They care about winning. They're all about this team. They know at some point they're going to eat. But they care so much about winning and about this team that they're willing to go out there and block. And, of course, it's going to pay off eventually. Seth Roberts gets his first touchdown. It was a beautiful pass by Lamar and a beautiful catch by Seth Roberts. Mark Andrews also got another touchdown himself. That was It was a complete dive over the middle by Lamar. Just a beautiful, perfectly thrown pass by Lamar for his second touchdown. His other two touchdowns went to Mark Ingram, who basically was doing whatever he wanted. For the most part, he didn't go off and explode in the run game because they were focused on trying to stop the run as much as possible. But in the past game, you know, like this, but in the receiving end, he was he got two touchdowns. He was balling, man. And that second touchdown, that man ducked over one dude and then just kept running, kept his feet up, and just dived in the end zone. Absolutely beautiful. Mark Ingram is just a blessing. I'm so glad he's on this team, man. He is the... I can't even describe it, man. I know the Saints did not want to lose him. And they're looking at this, and they're like, man, I wish we still had Ingram. But I know they're happy for him. They just wish he was still on the squad because Ingram is just... He brings such a positive vibe to this team, such an entertaining vibe. And the press conference he had when he walked up to introduce Lamar was absolutely priceless. I love Mark Ingram. Just, just absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad he's on this team. Um, yeah, offense was just rolling. Offensive line. Round of applause for the offensive line. I mean, they're just playing at such a high level that Lamar is not even getting sacked. He's not getting touched. He has plenty of time to step up on, just stay in the pocket and just step up and make perfect throws. This offensive line is just doing such a great job. And besides Yonda, Everyone else is just young on this offensive line. So this this is just great. To have a good offensive line for the foreseeable future is absolutely spectacular. They're doing a great job. The run game is going well. Lamar Jackson, again, another highlight run from him. I mean, that man just crossing over dudes, getting past, just putting people on the floor. It took six defenders to try and put him down. He, he dodged the first one, crossed over the second one, still going, breaks another tackle. That's three. He crosses over another one. That's four. A fifth one tries to get him. He can't get him. That's six one. He head cuts him. And then the seventh one barely managed to get him. So he beat six of these Texas defenders before the seventh one came and stopped him. It was a 39-yard run, and man, Lamar Jackson is just a highlight. He's absolutely beautiful. Lamar Jackson... I'm so glad this dude is my quarterback, man. I, You don't understand. As a Ravens fan, it's been so hard to see an offense. To see an offense be this great for a Ravens team. I'm not crying. But like, this is to, for an offense to be this great, it's, it's just insane. And I'm enjoying every moment of it. Ravens fans do remember the horrible years of 2017. Anybody remember the 10-point curse? That we had back in 2017 where we would score go up early 10 to nothing and then our offense wouldn't score anything until maybe the last drive when the game's basically over those were dark times man but man to have lamar as a quarterback and this offense just rolling and moving is absolutely beautiful what makes this even better is the defense is just playing so well deshaun watson had absolutely no time and um credit to our defense for just what's he got sacked seven times seven sacks and two turnovers. Man, this defense is rolling. We know how the Ravens defense, historically, they really get up for these type of games and they start playing their best football around November and December. So I'm expect, I definitely expect, especially with all, you know, getting all these guys like Peters and bringing Bynes in and now picking up Peko and stuff. It's just, it's just been great. It's been great. They've upgraded their defense. The pass rush is getting better. Judon has been absolutely spectacular these last couple of weeks. He has definitely raised this game up and become the pass rusher that we've definitely needed. He's still improving. He's getting better. And I know he's going to be a beast come soon. He's just balling right now. Get, I think he had two sacks in this game. He's just absolutely spectacular. Two turnovers for Watson. It was tough for him. And uh, this defense, man, this, this Ravens defense... They're good. That secondary is good. Uh, Jimmy Smith got a little smoked by DeAndre Hopkins at some point. And again, that is to be expected. In a way, Jimmy Smith's still trying to work himself up. I think this is the third game he's played since coming back from that week one injury. So it's going to take him time. Also, he's not faster than Hopkins. Marlon Humphrey did a better job 
in covering um, Hopkins than Jimmy Smith and, and Humphrey could barely cover him. DeAndre Hopkins is just a straight beast. It's not really easy to cover him. Speaking of that, um, the first quarter, that was a terrible, terrible, terrible miss by the, the refs. Blatant pass interference on fourth and two. Marlon Humphrey pass interference right there on DeAndre Hopkins and the refs don't call it. The Texans challenge and the refs decide they're going to be petty. This is what the refs are doing this season. The, the challenges are only going to be useful in the postseason to avoid what happened with the Saints. But in the regular season, the refs are going to be so petty that they're going to get pissed off if you throw the flag and try to challenge their play. They're like, oh, it doesn't matter. We know it's pass interference. We're not going to call it because you decided to throw that challenge flag. They're being real petty with that. That was blatant pass interference. Everybody knew it. That should have been first down on the one-yard line for the Texans. I don't know if that would have highly impacted the game, knowing how the Ravens offense got going, but they would have at least possibly gotten three or seven points. That could have helped their offense get going. So for the refs to just miss that, the challenge was what which um, Bill O'Brien was right to throw, and for them to just pretend that it wasn't a pass interference and to not overrule that when everybody clearly saw it was pass interference, the refs are being petty, man. They're being petty. I know they don't like this whole challenge pass interference calls. They really hate that. But still, man, if you missed the call, just just make the right call. I know you don't like the, the, the whole fact that coaches are able to challenge these plays, but just make the right call. It's, like, it's just being petty. And DeAndre Hopkins talked about that after the game, which he was right to do so. I don't know if it probably wouldn't have impacted the game, but who knows what could have happened if they got the ball to win. Maybe they score. Maybe the Ravens' offense doesn't get it going. Who knows? Although the way this offense has been playing, I don't think no matter what, the Texas defense was not going to hold off Lamar in the offense. It was not going to happen. But yeah, that was a terrible miss. Um, but yeah, Jimmy Smith did his best with DeAndre Hopkins. Marlon Humphrey did his best with DeAndre Hopkins. I think he got what, like seven catches for 88 yards or something like that. He, he I mean, he still did his thing, but like, he got, <laughs> what can you do about that pass interference call? He, he, he really should have got that call, but it is what it is. Ravens defense is balling right now. Seven sacks and two turnovers. <sighs> They're, they're getting to the they are getting to the quarterback they are making key stops and they are getting the ball back to our offense and our offense is not only controlling the clock and dominating in time of possession they're scoring as well you understand how scary that is for a team to be able to possess the ball for 40 minutes and to also be able to put up 30 points that is scary what are you supposed to do you can't you don't have enough time to go out there and make plays because their defense is fully rested. They get to possess the ball for eight, nine minutes while the clock runs down, and they're putting up touchdowns to the field goals. Man, it, I don't know how future teams are going to try and... Um, good luck to the to the Rams. Good luck to the 49ers. We'll get to see what they can do. They get a shot, but like, I don't know how you stop this team right now. This team is rolling beyond belief. They're not just winning games. They're making statements by crushing their opponents. It is just crazy. Oh yeah, Tucker also missed a field goal. Uh, that was very out of character, you know, out of character. But you know, it, it's Tucker. If he misses a field goal, I'm like, it's Tucker. He's the most accurate kicker in NFL history. I can deal with him missing a kick here or there. It is what it is. For some reason, kickers this season have been absolutely awful, and sometimes it's going to get to Tucker as well. It just seems to be the kicker's curse this year. I don't know. But yeah, he missed a kick. Uh, we went for it on fourth down. No, well, we didn't go for it on fourth down. We actually had a fake punt which I didn't agree with. I'd rather have us put our offense out there. You know, our offense, the Ravens offense, that's number one in converting fourth downs. What are we, 10 of 13 on completing fourth downs? Number one. Number two is Houston. They're at 70%. We're number, the number one team in converting fourth downs. I'd rather put Lamar and his offense out there on a fourth and short than to try to fake it. Just fake it to Mark Andrews and see if he can get the first down. It, it just didn't work out. So yeah, um, we also got a muff punt, but the defense, the Texan defender kind of got close, so I'm not going to really blame it on our punt return, but like, yeah, other than that, the Ravens did what they had to do, they crushed their opponent, it wasn't close, offense, after the first quarter, after Lamar went one of six, he started connecting, went, had 13 straight completions, killed it, four touchdown passes, just, oh, and Gus Edwards late in the game, getting a 64-yard run, he was balling, pretty much ice in the game, um, the Texans also got like a 40, what was it, a 45-yard rushing touchdown late in the game. I don't remember who it was. Was it Johnson? No, Johnson had the first one. I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was, maybe it was, I don't know. I, I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was Johnson. I don't know. But like, 
It was late in the game, it didn't really matter. The game was long, just long gone after that. It was over at that point. But yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up. There's not much I can really say about this. Offense dominated, defense shut down, special teams could use some work. We're still trying to figure that out. And yeah, Ravens improved to eight and two. The Texans fall down to six and four, which is very key because the Colts won their game. So now the Texans drop from first place in the AFC South to second place. Um, we're gonna have to see what they can do. That offensive line, they're gonna have to fix it because they're not giving any time for Watson to do anything. It's it's not fun for Deshaun Watson. He actually hurt his ankle in this game. It's just not fun right now for Deshaun Watson and the Texans because that offensive line is not blocking for him, so he can't make plays downfield. Watson also cannot hold on to the ball for too long. Sometimes he's trying to create a play, he keeps scrambling, trying to make a play because he's holding on to the ball too long, and that's how he ended up fumbling early in the first quarter. He's got to get the ball out of his hands quick. Either make a play, get down, or throw it out of bounds. That's what you got to do. If, you, if there's nothing down there, just get down, dude. You don't want to take unnecessary hits. The offensive line you know is not great, so why are you going to risk those type of hits? You, you know, it could cause turnovers like it did in this game. But yeah, I, f I feel like the Texans are going to be fine. That they can get that O-line fixed, which I don't know at this point, can you? If that O-line can just step up and play better and protect Watson, the Texans are going to be fine. I still believe they can win the division, but um, who knows? Because Jacoby Brissett came back and got them a win, so it's definitely going to be a fight between them. We'll have to see how that goes. They did beat the Colts, so, you know, they, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We will actually, what, the Colts do that? what am I talking about? I don't remember. I wasn't watching that game. But yeah, they still got a chance. I still believe the Texans are going to win the AFC South. We'll see. It's definitely going to be a fight between them and the Colts. But yeah, that's all I got for this. I have to go watch the Sunday Night Football game. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Ravens, you got the Rams next week in LA. We'll see what you do with that. I've enjoyed watching you. Keep up the good work. Keep out going out there and making these statements and playing well. And hopefully, we'll see where we are in January. Maybe even get to February for the Super Bowl. But let's take it one week at a time. We're not going to talk about the Super Bowl. Anyway, that's all I got, man. Go Ravens!